I am Ethan Hill, a UH grad student in the lab with Dr. Marguerite Butler, and I'm excited to share my work about using genomics to track SARS-CoV-2 introductions in the state of Hawaii. Researchers around the world have been sequencing SARS-CoV-2 during the pandemic, and by comparing the Hawaii sequences to over 11 million sequences in the worldwide GSAFE database, we can learn a lot about how COVID moves through our state. The leader in the Hawaii sequencing effort is the Hawaii Department of Health State Laboratories Division, which has sequenced about 80% of all SARS-CoV-2 samples, and we in the Butler Lab at the University of Hawaii contribute with additional sequencing and analysis. Using the DNA sequences, we can build a phylogeny, or family tree, of our Hawaii sequences plus a random sample of 12,000 worldwide sequences. We can then layer the geographic data on top of that sequence data. Then, we can use sophisticated mathematical models to estimate where the SARS-CoV-2 introductions came from prior to arriving in Hawaii. To give you an idea of what this looks like, here's the genealogy of just the Omicron variant for all samples sequenced in Hawaii, next to their closest relatives from around the world. Zooming into this tree, we can see where an introduction occurred and count how many imports and exports Hawaii has experienced. So how has Hawaii been doing? Here are the number of imports into the state through time. You can see the early variants, Alpha, Gamma, Mu, Hawaii did exceptionally well and kept the imports down to a minimum. However, during the wave of the Delta variant, the number of imports increased substantially. The Omicron surge was even worse than the Delta surge. At the same time, Hawaii has also been exporting the virus. Exports are at a lower rate than imports, but you can see that the boom periods of imports coincide with the boom periods of exports. Now, why would that be? This pattern makes sense if we look at travel. Early in the pandemic, out of concern that Hawaii's limited ICU and hospital resources would be overwhelmed, the state of Hawaii instituted strict travel restrictions and Hawaii saw a drop in travel volume, relaxing the quarantine while pre-travel testing had little effect. What really had an impact was removing pre-travel testing requirements. In mid-June, vaccinated residents could travel without testing, which also coincided with the emergence of the Delta variant. In mid-July, any vaccinated domestic traveler could bypass pre-travel testing. On November 8th, vaccinated international travelers could bypass pre-travel testing as well. Some might argue that Delta and Omicron are more transmissible, which is true. However, we can look at a direct comparison of Delta in the month before versus the month after the lifting of the pre-travel testing requirements. When testing was lifted for Hawaii residents, the number of introductions doubled. When lifted for domestic travelers on July 8th, introductions doubled again. So, where are these introductions coming from? Well, we can address that with our data. These diagrams show domestic or international sources flowing into each county. The Alpha variant originated internationally, but most of the introductions circulated on the U.S. mainland before arriving in Hawaii. Most entered through Honolulu County. The Delta and most of the other variants show a very similar pattern. A notable exception is Omicron. Most of those introductions came directly from international sources. Here is the Omicron tree. International sequences have been marked in purple. Another important consideration is the time to first arrival. When a new variant is identified anywhere in the world, how long does it take to reach Hawaii? Well, the Alpha and Delta variants each took months to enter the state, while the Omicron variant got to Hawaii in a matter of weeks. Let's now take a look at the inter-island movement. There's a similar pattern as with the imports to the state. Note that all inter-island testing and quarantine restrictions were relaxed on June 15th, and we can see a sharp increase in the amount of inter-island movement. And while we cannot directly test the cause and effect of this type of study, the pattern is consistent. Each time testing requirements are listed, the data shows a big increase in the movement of the virus. So, what can we take away from all of this? Well, Introductions tend to double following the relaxation of free travel testing. Introductions were primarily from the US until the emergence of Omicron. There is substantial inter-island movement, but thankfully, social distancing and travel restrictions have slowed the rate of introduction into Hawaii. Hospital resources have been available to the public throughout the pandemic, and Hawaii has had relatively few deaths compared to the rest of the world. And we hope that we've shown you the power of exploring the genomic data and tracking this changing pandemic, and we hope this information will be helpful to the public and to decision makers in the future.
And a huge thank you to everyone involved with this project, especially the Department of Health State Laboratories Division for providing us with the samples and funding to make this project possible. And thank you to Martin Adra of ACES for generating this wonderful animation. Created using Powtoon.